Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to another episode of Design Blind Date. This week we have Katharina Klassen. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. She's a German designer from the south of Germany who has a UX practice. She doesn't like calling it a freelance business, more like an agency, but it's just her. And I wanted to discuss with her how she builds a successful business, even though she's from kind of a small town, which a lot of people um, might relate to as you know, a burden or something that makes their life harder. But talking to her actually looks like she uses it to her advantage. So I think this is a really great conversation. Hope you enjoy it. Enjoy. Hey, Katharina, what's Yay. up? Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming, even though you're sick. Hey. Still making an yeah. effort. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really great that you invited me. I'm really excited. And of course, I'm also joining if I'm sick. No problem. Amazing. amazing. I hope it's not a problem for the listeners and they all understand me. Okay. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think if you're... You, you look fine now. You know, I was watching before on Instagram, you were like... A little bit <laughs> down, but now Messed look, up. yeah, no, kind of like we, with the we can get and that, that look going if you like it. <laughs> so listen, I've been following you, you know, on Instagram mainly, and like I love your content. And I think what would be interesting to to get the conversation started is you're based in uh, in the south of Germany, next to Stuttgart. Exactly. Um, I've been to Stuttgart, really but I've good. never been to. You're in. S Essling, how, what's the name of the town? Esslingen. Esslingen. Yes, you've yeah. been to Stuttgart. To Stuttgart, I've been. I love that. Yeah, I had friends there, and uh, when I was traveling in Germany, I was visited visited there. Ah, oh, really cool. Yeah. So, in in general, it's kind of like I would say a small town, and you're freelancing. Um, so, I thought it would be interesting to talk about how you got started freelancing, especially when you're doing mm-hmm. UX and 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 work on you know technology products. I think there's, I know that there's a lot of people who feel like if they're working in a small town, they might not get the opportunity to work on such a cool, cool project with, with great clients. And there's a lot of questions about how do you get started and how do you find great clients? If, you know, I don't know, I'd love to hear from you. Is there like a huge design scene or tech scene, um, where you Mm -hmm. are, or are you using the internet to find clients? Like I'd love to hear how you got started with that. Everything. Okay, basically, yeah. I am trying to answer everything that you asked. Okay, so first of all, I'm not sure whether I'm working on cool projects. Of course, I love all of my projects and all of my clients. So yes, for me, they are really cool. Um, I will give you like the short... I would try to, to give you the short story of how I started. Um, first of all, I, I really don't call myself a freelancer. I don't know why, but uh, I regard myself as like a one woman agency because okay. I basically do, do the same stuff as, as agencies here. Um, and how I started, I, I was studying information design and uh, there I, we had to do like a practical semester where we were, had to work in a company. And when I was doing that, I was like, okay, I definitely want to be self-employed at some point. And I didn't even wait. I just go to to the office. I don't know how you call it in English. How did you you understand that? How how did you figure that out? I maybe I, I wasn't lucky with that, uh, what I did uh, in that practical semester, but I, I, I didn't like it that much. And I thought, I would love to do my own thing. Okay. I just want to do, yeah, I, I love the freedom and just um, follow my growing path like I want to. And so I just um, went to that office where you have to, um, where I thought I have to go to be self-employed. And um, what do you yeah, mean? Like registering po- a company or what do you mean? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Yeah, but not a company. In I, I don't know whether the system is the same everywhere, but in Germany, there's, defi- there's basically two ways. You can either be like a, a freelancer yeah, um, or you can have an um, Gewerbe, um, like a business, yeah, exactly. more or less. Mm-hmm. And I thought I would have to do the second thing and didn't know that I can do just freelancing because of my background as a designer, as an information designer. 
Uh, but that wasn't important for me. I just knew, okay, I wanted to do that. And so I started freelancing um, while studying information design and worked on, on some smaller projects because I didn't need that much money back then. So I didn't have any pressure to do like really big, cool um, things. I could just do anything I liked. And that's how I got started. And it went pretty wait, okay. Wait. So um, you, you study design in Stuttgart as well? Or, yes, okay. yes, yes. I and studied information design. Information which is design. Not it's not design. I thought it would be design mm -hmm. <laughs> before because of the name, but actually it's not that much uh, of design. It's more usability engineering, information psychology, user experience, Got design it. So stuff. So not, not covering um, like yes. the visual side, typography, like no, that, 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 a little bit yes when it comes to inter interface design and such, but not that much what what I thought before it and it's also web development and really broad got yeah. it so how do you how did yeah. you get project what kind of project you did while you were in school Ooh, um like with those people I, that I, you reached out to how did you get those projects no 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 i think it the the, the thing is You just need to tell everyone that you are um, self-employed now and that you are doing design. And uh, back then I was like, I'm doing everything. If it's like, if I can design anything, I do it. And then the people come to you normally and say, oh, I, I need, I, I know someone who, who needs a website or we need uh, some logo designs. And like I said, back then it, there was no pressure behind it. So I did just anything yeah. in order to get started. And So those were like people my, in your in the network that you already had, like friends, family, that yeah. type of stuff? Okay. Yeah, Got it. yeah, exactly. And also um, other students and um, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I think the basic trick in the beginning is just to tell everyone that you know, because even though if they are not from the design community or you don't think that they are relevant um, as, as your network, They probably are because everyone knows anybody who might need something. Yeah. And so this this is the basic trick I, I think in the beginning, and that's what I did. And I I think I didn't worry about it at all. And actually, that's still how I'm doing it today. And it just it was okay. I had some 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 stuff to do, and also at some point. Um, One, at least one or another agency as well reached out whether I would um, consider free freelancing for them. So the classic freelancing mm -hmm. for another agency, which I'm not doing um, anymore since then. But back then for me, it was like, yes, fine, cool. Uh, a more steady income besides the besides studying. And so I did that as well. They're also local and in your area. Yeah. And the, yeah, yeah, they were, f were from, from Stuttgart as well. From Stuttgart as well. Yes. Got it. And they were also yeah. working in what type of projects? Were those like app design, websites? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so one the one studio, it was a smaller studio. They were basically on the um, focus on the financial sector and apps in the financial sector. And yeah, I was doing screen design there. and But it was 2004. 13 14 so it it's it's a long time ago <laughs> pretty long time not that much <laughs> but um the other um agency was i i think they started out as an uh, just branding and communication design agency and then started their way into also the digital field which i think pr many agencies did back then and yeah i i was also more do, doing digital stuff because that's actually what I focused on during my studies and that's what I'm good at. I'm not experienced in, in print stuff at all. Yeah. So um, that I for me, I thought when I finished um, studying, I will continue being self-employed because I just loved it very much and I thought, okay, it's, it's going good and if I have more time to focus on it, it will probably be even better. But um, when I was uh, reaching the end of my um, bachelor thesis um, and therefore the end of my studies, a startup here from Stuttgart reached out to me and yeah, wanted to employ me as their first designer. They were just starting with their product. And I thought, it sounds pretty cool because it's a smart home product and I really love smart home. 
Um, it was uh, in the beginning of 2014 as well. And um, I said to my husband, now husband back then, he was only my boyfriend who um, was um, also studying information design with me and we were ri writing our thesis together. And I said to him, you should uh, go there because they reached out to him as well. <laughs> it's, it's a small, like you said, it's a small town. We're in the south of Germany. They went to dribble and they just looked for people who were fitting and they okay. reached out to both of us Got it. Uh, they didn't know that we are we were a couple and so i said you should you should definitely go there i think it's it's a really good fit for you but he just started working at an agency um doing concept work basically and um, he said no because he's not that kind of a person who d starts something and then just Yeah. starts another thing yeah. he said no i just started here now you go and i said no 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 i i don't and then i then i basically in the end i went there in order to see how it is and i thought maybe i can um talk to my husband again and get him to start there <laughs> but then i liked the so it was a small team of uh, four developers um Two of them were the CEOs and founders. One also founded the product and the other one was the first employee. And they were all so cool and I just liked the product and the vibe. And then I thought, what the hell? I <laughs> I just start here. It it will probably be really amazing. And it was really cool. It it was a pretty good fit for me because um Yeah, I, I am a person who likes to do a lot of different things. And I think you are probably maybe the same because you're doing a lot of different things as well, like I saw. And there I could really do um, work on the strategy, on the concept, on support strategies. Um, on I could do some research. I could do the design of the app, of the website. I could program the website. I was just, I could do anything. And that was a really good fit for me. And I stayed there for almost two years and then decided to go back to being self-employed. Um, and that was then really easy because they um, were immediately afterwards my clients. So because I ended work there and they still had um, a need for what I did when I was still there. So you left there um, on good terms and, and were just like, yes, I want to, yes. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can still help you, but I'm going to do other things. They, um, so for me, I, I'm really thankful for, for them um, doing that back then because We, we had some discussions. I said where I, where I see this company going back then. I already was really, um, I really thought that user experience design is going to be a big thing. And I was always really um, certain that it's important that you do research and stuff like that. And I wanted to grow that inside the company and they basically didn't see that happening. Um, back then, I think it, that changed um, because like all, everyone is doing your ex now. And so, but back then that was the case and they were really kind and said, maybe it's better if you try to do it that on your own and we hire you as a, yeah, as an external partner. And that was, that was so great of them, so kind of them, because of course it's not uh, cheaper for them to do it that way. Um, and so we did that. And for me, that was cool because I had a safe basis to start again into my self-employment. And so was that, that, was that type of retainer, like for two days a week, you're going to, or, or was it just kind of like a project base? Do you understand? Um, Do you understand I think in the yeah. yeah 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 I'm I'm I understand what you're saying. I think in the beginning, um, in order to have like the security they needed and I needed, I think we had some kind of understanding. Like I will do this amount of work for them, and um, I will get this amount yeah. of money or something in in that space. I, I'm not But remembering like a retainer, exactly like how on a regular did. base. Yeah. yeah, for I think we 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 um we said okay we will do that for half a year yeah. or something like right. that and then reevaluate mm -hmm. and I think we we even didn't do it for that long, but um, through the the connections I have had built up there, um, I got also another startup client from the smart home space and also based um, in Stuttgart or no. 
No, okay. I think they were based. I'm not sure, but I think they were based in Berlin. Okay. You, you, I'm not <laughs> remembering all this. Okay. You see, um, but I think they were based in Berlin. Yeah. Um, but today that that is not a problem. So we did all the communication via, um, I don't know, Skype and and stuff. And uh, we never met in person. I think that's incredible. Not, not one time. How do you do? Yeah, yeah. Kind of like, how do you do? Because a lot of times when you when you do UX work and research, it needs to be uh, either in person if you want to talk to yeah. their to their their users, or a lot of I I yeah. find from my experience that a lot of it is kind of like either you know sprints or you need to be in a room to brainstorm or do the research. How do you do that when you're remotely? Um, okay, yeah, it depends. So back then I, I was working on, on the website mainly. I was uh, doing the concept design and I was also programming it. Um, and for that it was okay. We were not doing that much of research. Um, today that, that changed. So mm -hmm. um, companies are more open to research and I um, also get to do re research. But back then I think, okay, actually that's not true. Um, we did some research. I did a type form um, mm, survey. survey. Yeah. yeah, I analyzed all of the data that was already existing. Um, and I'm not sure what, what else I did, but, but I basically did everything you could do from, from, the, from far away. So n n no in-person um, interviews as such. Got it. Um, but t today I also have projects and, where and there is a need... Wait, wait, Let's, yeah. well, yeah, we're no going problem. very fast, but I want to, I want to understand. Yeah. So this was a project, um, for a specific, uh, a deliverable, like what, what was it like a product design or a website? What was the project? Yeah, that was a website. Yeah. That was a website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said, yeah, like I said, it was a website. Um, and I hope I'm I'm telling you everything uh, right and correct, but yeah, that was for the website. And so basically what we needed to find out through um, research was not product-based, what I normally do. Yeah. So normally I work on a product. And in the, in the case of a website, it's more about marketing. Got you need it, to understand it. why are the customers buying or considering buying the product, um, what might keep them from buying, what questions do they have. That's important for a website. So that was the things we needed to find out. And from that, I built a concept and design for the website, and then I programmed it as well. And Amazing. then it was finished so totally <laughs> yeah. completely uh, a full stack designer from start to finish yes 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 that's me i'm i think i'm a full stack everything <laughs> not only designer it's but it's a problem and we can talk about that later if you like as well it's not always easy but it's just the way i am and the way i like like it but it's definitely not easy and yeah from there things just um kept coming in um, and I think I've never called, emailed or called or something anyone or even did specific marketing activities to get new clients. It was, was always through referrals. Always referrals. So yeah. It's always, the, so, yeah. So just, you know and trying, someone and. So the, because you, you worked and had experience in that specific startup, and and they were in the same category so they were asking them oh you're in the smart home who's your designer or something like that um, or they they no, were looking I for think, a portfolio yeah. of somebody who's working on smart homes solutions or something like that um no that the i was in contact with someone um when i was still working at the startup with the small, smart home startup i was um, in contact with someone who had a smart home blog back then and um yeah therefore we we had a lot of contact mm -hmm. um back then and he also knew that i um was um, starting my my own career basically and he because he was so deeply into inside this smart home um environment um because of his blog he also knew this client and that they were in the um on the search for a web designer mm, got it. and 
that's how he made the connection. Yeah. Great. I think that was how it worked back then. Yeah. yeah. I think I bas basically I had the same experience. Like when I worked in a, I used to work in an agency, then I worked in a startup. And during my work at a startup, I met so many new people from that ecosystem of, of the tech world yeah. that later on when I left, And also I actually did the similar thing to you that when I left, I had kind of a retainer client so that I would have kind of a soft landing mm. into being self-employed. And a lot of the connections that I did during my time there later on um, turned out to be client work or referrals or, yeah, I think getting, getting yeah. a job even if you know that it's not for you, like you said, you initially knew that it's not for you. It's really a great way to build kind of a network besides obviously the experience. Yeah. And what I have to say, um, it was, it was an awesome time. I, I still love it. And it was so hard to stop working there. Uh, to be honest, my, my husband later started there as well that I didn't tell you. <laughs> um, so he was still, he was still at the company And it was so hard for me to give up that baby that I basically it was my baby. I'm, I mean, I, I we released the product after I started there. So the concept was from me. The design was from me. I was um, working. I was doing support one whole day um, each week and talking to the customers. We were like really co close. And then I just started working there and it was really fucking hard. I, I even um, said to my hus husband, um, please don't tell me too much at the moment about, um, about work. And so I, I can't just, I can't bear it. It's too hard. I, I would have cried all the time. So that's, I think it's important to say that I really loved working there. I really loved the product and it was really hard. Um, but also it was, it was the perfect decision back then and it, it went really good. So I, Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy doing what I'm doing now. And I think I've never been as happy as I'm at the moment. Wow, so that's incredible. It, that's it, incredible. Yeah, it was. So how do you, yeah. so what is, what is, are you still in that smart home category of clients mm -hmm. or it has broadened, changed over the years? How, how long since you've been yeah. self-employed now? Okay, so I finished working there in the end of 2015. So okay. starting 2016, I got back to fully working as a self-employed designer. And yes, I still do a lot in that space um, and still through the connection. Because only, now only my for German husband, clients or international mm, clients as well? Yeah, it's German or Austria, uh, which is basically German, <laughs> Germany as well. No, they would, would like to hear that. German-speaking yeah. clients. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, German. and But not only in the South, of course. Um, but um, the other clients that I have, I think they are all from the South. Mm -hmm. And my focus, I, I yes, I am pretty much focused on smart home but I'm also doing another other things for example I also have a client from the machine industry mm -hmm. um, metal machines um, and there I'm working on the on a machine interface which is something really different for me as well cool. because Sounds I'm really, normally oh, really interesting yeah that's so exciting I love it Yeah, that's that's pretty pretty different because I normally only work on consumer products on apps and that's something totally different. But it's cool and I love it. I'm always open for things, but also yes, I I understand why it's sometimes good to find your focus, and that's really hard for me. But it would be way easier if I just succeeded in finding a focus when you say focus you mean yeah. specifically kind of a niche for your clients to be known for like a specific category yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i think it's easier especially when it comes to marketing and making decisions and um yeah i think it's easier if you if you have to find new clients i think it's easier if you have that niche yeah and if you have something where you can focus on because we we always have to focus on us being a 
uh, a professional uh, and I think it's easier to communicate, hey, I'm, I'm an expert in this field, I'm a professional, if you are focused on something. If you say I'm just doing everything and I have this project and this project and I'm doing this and that and that, it's way harder to come across as an expert. And that's what's all, what is it all about for us. It's um, coming across as an expert in our for sure. field. I think, yeah. I think so many people miss this. Specifically, you know, I'm I'm talking to with a few designers re regarding a new project, and so many. Even I'm a designer, but when I'm hiring designers, I'm still I'm as a client or as somebody who's about to spend the money. I'm afraid. Should I trust this person? Can I give him the money? Is it okay? Is it going to be worth it? And I think so many designers forget that part of what they're selling is the confidence that everything is going to be all right. Yes. I'm an expert. You can trust me exactly. with this project. Exactly. And because um, it's scary, it's scary to hire somebody. Exactly. The thing is, I'm, that's also what I'm, I'm saying always. It's all about trust for us because they are spending a lot of money. It's about really big decisions and really big, it's about basically about their product or company yeah it's it's it can make a huge difference and it can cost a lot of money <laughs> so it's all about trust they need to trust you and that's also why i think um things like podcasts youtube like like what uh, you are doing or instagram are good channels for us because they are trust building channels mm. um you can you can sh show how you think how you are as a person um, what you do, what you really are um, able to do for them. And uh, yeah, it, I think it's all about trust. Mm. And that's why I love that's interesting. Uh, podcasting so, so and stuff like that. Yeah. That's really interesting. I think we can, we can move from here to actually talking about content because for me, uh, the main question that people are asking me is, do you get clients from my YouTube? Um, and the answer <laughs> is, yeah. for the most part, no. First of all, it's not the reason no. why I started, but it's no. But what you are saying, and I think that is true, is, is it helpful for clients who might get a referral about you, be more confident yeah. to close or to work with you because they got to see a few videos um, and yes. get the feel for you. And then, so in terms of basing your, your expertise, um, that, that is helpful. So... Yes, that's exactly how I see it. So I think it's all why about... Is you, you started it? Is it... You, um, mm, to be totally honest, when I do things and start things, it's normally... When I'm doing it for my own, it's normally not that strategically. Yeah. If I'm talking to my clients, I'm like the strategic person. If I'm doing my own things, I'm just like... I'm in the mood for that. I think it's cool. I like it. And then afterwards, I think if I have to tell someone why I did it, this could be the strategic, <laughs> intelligent answer. But that's not how. <laughs> I completely, that's not how I do I things. completely agree. Yeah, completely you, agree. you, yes, yes, yes. And I think you are so right. I think it's like you have to build up a network and personal connections. And then someone recommends you, and that person is like, okay. Their recommendation in, in terms of so, social proof is, is bringing me a long way. And I think, yeah, I might be able to trust that person. And then he's looking for you, um, going onto your website, maybe seeing, ah, okay, Ren is doing stuff on YouTube um, or Instagram or podcast or whatever. And that's then the trust building part where he or she might decide whether it's a good fit. And the other thing... Um, also, if you already have clients and they are listening to your podcast and uh, watching your YouTube videos, none of them maybe do, they by the way. <laughs> really, mine, mine do. Right. Some, some of mine do. And then they realize, oh, she also does that. Mm. I, I didn't know that. That's a good point. <laughs> okay, That's cool. A great point. Let's do that together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's also something that, that I saw happening. And but in the end, I, if I'm re being really honest with you again, I, I don't care about all of that. I just do it as, as long as it is fun for me. And if something comes out from that, I say, yes, awesome. And if not, I had fun anyway. Got so, it, got it. Yeah, it's okay. But okay, yeah. so maybe 
So I'm going to ask a question. Maybe you'll give me the strategic answer, even though you just did it for the fun. But one of the things <laughs> I was uh, I was curious about was your podcast is in German, and also your website yes. is in German, but your Instagram is yes. in English. Is there like a reason <laughs> for that, or did were you thinking about that? Because that's also a question. Yeah, no, that's right? just me being stupid. <laughs> no, I can tell you the reason. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think that it's that it's awesome, but. I can tell you the honest reason as well. So I started in Instagram in German as well because I was like, okay, I, I, don't, I don't want to compete with an English um, really broad market. Mm. I want to focus on the German market. And for me, that was the strategically awesome decision. So I just did that. And then um, Jonathan, uh, he, I don't know how Jonathan and why. Jonathan from AJ Smart? He, yes, okay. Jonathan from AJ Smart. I don't know how and why, but he saw, found me on Instagram, um, probably because I was like liking all of his shit and <laughs> saying like, you are so awesome. And uh, <laughs> then he kind of liked what I was doing and he was sharing um, me a few times. Uh, and there I'm on, honest again, I was really starstruck. I, I even printed his message. <laughs> out and put it on the wall I was like what okay what is happening and yeah I was really excited and then some of his followers came out over to me and before that it was only friends and family and I was talking to friends and family about UX and they was were always like I don't fucking care about UX and I was like it's a pity but I will still tell you all about it and then Then the first people came to my profile because of Jonathan who really were interested in this stuff I was talking about, but they didn't understand <laughs> me because I was talking German. So they wrote messages like, oh, it would be so cool if you could um, translate it and stuff like that. And I, like, I am a person, even if it's only one person who asked me, could you please translate it, I will do it. So I started translating everything I was saying into English in the text, which was really, ah, I hated it. It was so Hard, annoying. Yeah. And then I just thought, okay, more and more people were coming over only understanding English. And then I, I thought, okay, now I have to do it in English. Got it. So that's, that's the really non-strategical um, answer to it, that question. No. I think the answer was I started in Germany because basically the strategic decision is I want to focus. And there, the, you said there was a reason. It's easier to compete in German. There is not much great content about UX in German. So that was the strategic decision. Yeah. But then you had an opportunity, which was you got a, a new bunch of followers who you wanted to take advantage of that opportunity. So you just, you changed the strategy. Um, and I think that's, you are really kind. It, yeah, that sounds that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably yeah, yeah. That's that's right. Yes, and maybe it wasn't. But I think I'm still thinking about whether I should go back to my first thought of really focusing on the German market and also doing that in on Instagram and be consistent. Or um, how do you say it? Um, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, but um, but you know what? I, I couldn't think bring it. Sorry for interrupting you. Damn, I'm going to get so much no comments. Problem. I always get the comments. Stop, stop interrupting people. And I can never get over no, myself. No, it's no problem. I'm such a bad, I'm the same. bad conversation list. <laughs> I'm the same in that regard. I think, like, I wanted to go back into what you were saying before that, you know, a lot of your, uh, a lot of your clients are from the south of Germany. And basically, I mm -hmm. started this conversation asking you about being from a small town because... Usually, I think people see this as kind of um, a weakness or a problem. Like, I'm from a small town. There's not many clients around mm -mm. here. But I think what, yeah. I, what I heard about you, or maybe I'm just making this up, so just tell me if I'm wrong. But the fact that you are maybe in the south of Germany where there's not many UX designers, as in Berlin, where like in the big cities, there's tons of yeah. design. Then you yeah. actually have kind of... <laughs> you actually have a, an advantage over other people. And if you build yes. that up, you're the only or most famous South German UX designer, then, then you'll get a bunch of <laughs> yes. clients. Is that correct? Yeah. Or? You are so smart, <laughs> Ren. You know that. That's exactly right, yes. 
Um, I think it's an advantage if you are um, living in a smaller city or in an area where there are not so many um, people who are doing the same thing you want to do. And back then when I started, um, it was easier. I think now there are more people who call themselves UX designers and I'm competing with them probably, but also I'm not thinking about that as well. But you are right. It's easier if you are in a niche and the, and, and the market isn't that big probably or not the market but the, the offer is not that big because um, the other thing is um, our industry here is really big so we have a lot of potential clients here but not so many people who are offering what I am offering so I think it's it's an advantage more than a disadvantage like you said Cool, yeah. cool. Um, so, with I want to talk about how you kind of like structure the engagement because usually, and I see that a lot in your posts where you kind of elaborate about the process. Our process, you know, when we're doing web design or something, we we do the project and then we can move on to a next project. But when we're doing product based work a lot of the work is iterative you know you you do something mm -hmm. you design it then you have to review and understand what works so that you can design the next version and so there's few ways to work one of them is you know you work long term with a client the other one is project based mm -hmm. i wanted to know how you kind of structure your project when you're mm -hmm. doing work which is by nature iterative is it like, did you mm. understand what the yeah, question? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I understand what you mean. So for me, it's most of the time um, long-term um, projects and long-term clients. That's also why I don't have that many clients. And also if my really awesome long-term clients who I love, by the way, um, in case they're listening to this <laughs> right now, if I don't um, have work, but, um, from them anymore I would have to look for other clients but for me it's always long term and that also means like you said um, it's iterative and I think if you start where I start coming into the project um, wh where, where you are not knowing what you want to build this is the this is like our basic um, thing we don't know what the, what we want to build we want to find that out first and then we um we'll, we will decide where we want to go and then we will build it then we will test it we will iterate we will do an, more research if you are working like this i don't think you are able to work on like a um a basis like um I don't know how you say it in English. You write your proposal yeah. and say it will cost exactly. this. Exactly, project And then based. you will yeah. just do that. And it, yeah, yeah that's not possible for me. So from the beginning, I said to all of my clients, um, and I know that, that people say, you should do value-based pricing, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm doing hourly. Hourly, okay. I just, um, Why not, yeah, why I not just, based um, on, I don't know, uh, monthly... Or like, why hourly? I yeah, for me that's the the flexibility I need for my different projects that I have, and also I think it's cool for my clients because it's really flexible. And I I'm tracking my time, and I'm <laughs> I'm really fucking honest when I'm tracking my time, like five up to five minutes. If I get a coffee, I stop the timer. Uh, what and do you I'm, use? What do you I'm, use for time tracking? Um, I use timey. I've always used it. Timey and I or timely? Never, uh, need, no, timey. timey? Um, okay, I think I it's um, spelled T-Y-M-E. Um, okay, I don't know it. I'll check it out. Yeah. Okay. But I've, I've started using that when I was still studying and I never found the time to look at something else. But maybe I will do that at some point. But yeah, it's, for me, it's working so so good and I've never had any discussions with cl with clients and I hear from many other self-employed people freelancers that they have um, always discussions on um, payments and I've never had that and I think my clients also trust me a lot because if you are always really really honest they I think they just feel it 
and we don't ever have discussions. And it's really easy if there is someone calling me, hey, I would love to work with you. I'm just saying, okay, this is how it works. Um, my hourly price is this. I will track the time, everything I do. You will get an export from my tracking tool. And um, if you need, yeah, and I can also always give you a heads up when we reach a, a specific amount that you, that you uh, name. And also, the thing, I understand the, the discussion about the value-based pricing. I really understand it. But I also think if you s I think you won't bring a lot of value or you need, your client doesn't have a big budget, basically, then what I'm trying to do is I, I look at what can we do in a short amount of time that will bring as much value as possible so that it won't be too expensive and that's how I'm trying to yeah to, to get to the same solution got it yeah do you have them, so that's do you have how them I commit do it. to a certain amount of hours per month or something like that no no but I'm open for that I have a client now um, it's a startup and it's going well for them and they see that they might need me more in the future and that makes them nervous because they this year I was so fucking busy and they realized that and that it was always like, oh, I need to see if I have time. And for them, it's like, it would be nice if we had the security that you can work a certain amount uh, for us. And with them, I will probably come up with something like that so that I put aside a day per week for them or something like that. But yeah, that, I'm flexible it. when it comes to stuff like and that. And you don't feel like, <laughs> for me, the most painful thing I would say is that, you know, if you're busy and you've booked all your hours, so you're basically at the limit of what you'll be able to earn. And that's it. You can't, you don't yeah. have anything else to sell. You, yeah, that that's does a, not yeah, frustrate that's right. you or... Um, so I have to say, um, I feel like we... I don't know how how it is for you, but I feel like I earn pretty good money with if I do that, if I just sell my time. The only problem is if my processes are not awesome and if I do a lot of podcasts and writing Instagram messages because I just like the people mm. and do Instagram stories and all this free stuff, then of course I'm not earning money, hmm. money in that time. Got it. And I reached a point now where I was thinking about that as well. How can I work around that? Because if I would work all the time uh, and just um, send invoices for that time, I would be rich enough that I would be totally happy and that's enough for me. But of course you have that times as well. And I was thinking about hiring someone and actually I decided against it a few days ago and I was thinking for months, the first full-time employee um, because I wanted to still have that naivety and freedom to do whatever I like to do and not have that, um, yeah, someone who, who, I'm have, who I have to look out for. Yeah. And that was something I was thinking about. How can I scale it? And that would have been one way um, to, to scale it a little bit. And also other things are like you always I also do online courses, for example. I'm also, I also tried um, offering workshops, but offline workshops, of course. Um, yeah. And for me, it's okay. I, I feel like I it's going good and I earn enough money. Yeah, to it's cool. It's cool. Really it's like, happy. yeah, I don't know why my, I, well, first of all, I live in a very expensive city. So the city, and I have kids and that's oh, like, so it's, yeah. it's hard. It's a struggle, but, um, I guess yes, maybe it's something it's really expensive in the South of Germany as yeah. well. I have to tell you that Ren, maybe you don't know it, but for example, okay, Berlin is getting expensive as well, but the South of Germany and for example, the East of Germany, it's yeah, huge yeah, I know, difference. I know. Stuttgart is like super high-end city. I remember yes. it's like super expensive. I remember that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I uh, maybe it's just like an internal thing for but me. But what are your thoughts about what? Maybe you can tell me your thoughts about um, scaling and <laughs> the problem that if you sell hourly price uh, or yeah, just your work hourly, then it's. I think. Yeah. I think the. Like I, 
I was at a, I was there when I got started. I used to do retainers. I think just like you, it was kind of a long term engagement. I only worked with a few clients, long term, worked with them for years, and then I and also charging them hourly basically. And then I realized that if I take on projects which I can value price, I can make more money um, per hour. But and, and so I made the mm. switch basically. I structured it a little bit differently so that I can value price and I did make more money. But the truth is, even if you value price, you're, you only have so many hours per month, which mm. you can sell. So you're at, at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're at the same, maybe you're making a little bit more money, but you're at the same place where your hands are full. And you if you want to scale, yeah. yeah. And so doing, doing, selling a project, a product, like I'm selling my online course right now is a way to scale that because now I can sell, you know, hundred units, thousand units. It does not specifically requires, um, it's more scalable. I would say the other yes. thing is, yeah. is hiring and, and growing the team because you know, you're just one person. And so you can't do anything yourself. Um, mm. so is yeah. that something you're thinking about hiring someone? Definitely. Right. This is right now. My problem is, and it's the same, you know what? It's just like I told you before, right? So now I'm selling a course. I can sell more, yeah. like it's more scalable, but I'm, sp I'm spread thin too far. There is just mm. my hours yes. per day are still limited. So right now yeah. I think about my business, like there is content creation, there is, um, you know, there is the school where I have to create the content and make sure that the students succeed. And there is all of the, 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 the funnel, um, you know, the landing pages, the sales, the, all of that, you know, to turn people, um, into students. So I'm trying to do all of them at the same time. And, you know, mm -hmm. I just have a few hours per day, so it's limited. So for me, definitely it's about time to, and I also had this I don't know if it was fantasy and maybe, I don't know, but yeah, I, I, what I wanted to say is I'm going to try hiring right now. I know that some people mm. that hired and grew teams felt a lot of frustration. Not everybody. It's not mm -hmm. for everyone. Um, even yeah. like, do you know, Seth Godin, for example, he's mm -hmm. like very famous marketer and, and he was an entrepreneur. He built an amazing company, had 60 employees, made a lot of money. And then it was like, Hey, I, I hate running a company. I hate managing a team. Mm. I'm going back to being a freelancer. Mm. Now I'm a writer. Mm. I, I write a blog. I, I do speaking engagements, but I don't manage anybody. So I think yeah. it's just like the difference between being an employee and, and being, a, you know, self-employed. Yeah. It depends on your personality. And exactly. I never, yeah. I never built and managed the team. So I'm going to do that now because it's the logical next step, but I might find out later that, you know what? It's not for me. I don't know. I hope, I hope it's going to yeah. work out well, but I don't know. The truth That's is, really interesting. I don't know. I, it's so hard. And I was in, in the same spot because I had the opportunity to hire a former student of mine. Um, and I know that she, that I like her, that she's an awesome person. I know that she was good at doing screen design because I taught <laughs> screen design to her and I know what she was able to do. And I also, um, she also wrote her bachelor thesis for me or I was helping her out with that. I don't know how to say it in English. And I had the opportunity and I was thinking for month about it almost and it was such a hard decision because I had the same thoughts that that you are having and I al also thought okay I always saw myself having someone I can um, build up and uh, and yeah teach some something to this person or m maybe persons and now I have that opportunity and I thought I should do it. And I, I also thought it would be really cool to be able to say I have an employee <laughs> and su such. Um, and then I realized maybe those are the only reasons or those are the most present reasons. And the reasons that should be the reasons why I want to do, is, do it is it's good for the business. I need it. And I'm really, I would really fucking enjoy it. I'm sorry that I'm always swearing, no by worry. the way. 
It's great. This, this is this is an I, explicit. Uh, this is not a fr- uh, children friendly <laughs> podcast. It's with the explicit. Uh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. Okay, I would. Um, so that would be the reasons I wanted to do it. Um, good for the business. I would really love it. And good for the business. I would love it. I don't know. I feel like first I have to um, work on my process. I have to. I have to decide on. I think you are way ahead of me in that regard because you already figured it out what you want to do um how you're working stuff like that and for me i'm i'm still trying to figure that out i'm still trying to figure and it out as well it's just yes, everything is an experiment yeah. i don't know i'm, I'm gonna hire people yeah. i don't know if i love it i don't know i have no clue yeah but it's good that you you are you are open for trying it but i i thought okay first kata first you sit down You bring your process in order. You figure out what you want to do. You do that stuff. And then if you feel like you want to hire someone and that's something you want to do, then think about that again. Because the other thing is, I don't even know if I will always um, do the things I'm doing at the moment. So UX design and also... um, doing UI design while offering UX design because UX design for me is, is a bit more than UI design. I'm, I'm not sure whether I will continue doing that or maybe shift to um, more strategy work and doing workshop, consulting, um, building teams inside companies because at the beginning of last year, I decided that is probably, pre- probably the better solution going onwards because i see all the companies building ux teams themselves which makes sense by the way i understand that totally and i thought what is my role in that and my role could could be helping them with that and teaching them and um yeah so that's something i thought about and therefore it might be okay if i'm alone definitely, for the whole definitely. i'm a one woman agency it's better with people Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. First of all, what you said about building teams as a service, um, I did that with multiple clients. That's really, really fun. It's like, I'm, because they, for startups that are just growing and they don't have a design team, I'm doing the hiring for them. So interviewing and hiring, because they don't even know how to, what to look for in a portfolio. They don't know how to interview a designer. Then I'm bringing the designer yeah. on board, put puts all the processes and kind of like, T- uh, puts the design team in place and that's and that is something that you can value price because it it you know it's valuable to tell the, the company mm. in three months you're going to have a des- in-house design team working and producing and, and stuff like that um mm. th- so that is great in terms of services in terms of you know again it comes back to what you want to do i think um mm. No, even if you have employees, you're going to ha- change your services and, and what you do because the world changes, you know, there's mm-hmm. going to be new challenges, new tools, new processes, and you're going to have to change. So that's yeah. not a reason not to hire. I mean, you're going to have to change anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, I guess for a yeah. lot of time yeah. I was thinking about this and I didn't want to do this specifically I didn't want to build an agency I kind of had mm-hmm. for a lot of time yeah. problem with the agency model um, of you know yes. hiring somebody yeah. and then just charging for their hour and adding something as a fee for myself yes. or something like that yes 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 I yeah I understand that very well yeah yeah but yeah but yeah I guess you, you <laughs> I guess it depends on what you're trying to accomplish and you can't do everything yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think the, the the problem for me was that I'm so happy at the moment and I think part of why I'm so, why I am so happy is not because of the mo- money that I earn but because of the things I do and the freedom I have and not feeling pressured into finding clients and doing stuff yes and i think that's part of why i'm happy and for me it always comes down to what makes me happy and i think it most of the time the answer is not money and 
if a new employee would only bring me more money but not make me more happy, then then it's not the I right think. decision. And I think that yeah, that might be it. But I think in some cases and probably in your cases, an employee would would also make you more happy. And then I think it's the right decision yeah. and then it's awesome because for a lot of people that enables them to do the things that they love <laughs> and then it's the awesome decision. I just had a new idea make. in mind while we were saying this that maybe like because all the people that I know that are running teams, they're all like, dude, don't hire. It's like, you're going to have so much headache. You're going to have to take care of that. Then they're going to be sick. Then they're going to, they want this. And then they, you have to buy them the chair and they, then, then they're not showing up to work and then they quit. And then they, you, you'll have so much headache. Um, yeah. but you know what? I think it, it might be like, like kids. You don't have kids yet or you don't. Not okay. Yet. So no. I think it's kids are a lot of headache. But then again, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So like you can't, mm -hmm. you can't even explain. And I think maybe, I, I don't know, maybe it's too soon for me to, to talk about this, but maybe having employees is a lot of headaches, but it enables you to do a lot of other things. So, because you were talking yes. about happiness and it's, you know, it's hard to say like kids make you happy, but they also bring you a lot of pain. So things are not like, Yeah. happy or unhappy sometimes it can change a yes, yes. few times per day you know so it's it's not like mm -hmm. a static thing like oh, i do this it makes yeah. me happy yes but it also makes me angry a lot of times but it's <laughs> <laughs> you know so you are so right and and ren you should you should stop talking because i was so i was so unsure whether i whether i did the uh, wrong decision i i really I even found the person because I liked her so much. I was looking for something else for her. And I think I found a really cool gig for her. And it was it was a pain in my heart. It really pained me to see her go to that direction, even though I was happy for her. But I also was sad for myself because I thought maybe that was the wrong decision. And now you are talking about this and it makes a lot of sense. And I'm, that was all that all were the thoughts I also discussed with my husband. So maybe I'm afraid now, but maybe it will be really awesome because I will, of course, it will, some things will change, but some other th things will open up and they could be awesome as well. And I just don't know it yet. Um, but that's the decision I made for now, at least. And I ho really hope that for her, it all works out and she finds an awesome job and i also hope it works out for me for sure for <laughs> but sure. um no i think yeah, i guess i think not, I think not being not having to report or or like be in charge of somebody like i saw you say that you're going on a one week vacation next week or this mm -hmm. weekend this is incredible yeah. I, i think that's a lot of freedom that it's harder to have when you have employees or or some somebody that you have to, needs you you know on a daily basis or how, mm. how do you do that with your clients yeah, yeah. like when you take the time off do you just tell them i'm not going to be here or um i tell them but the clients who know me know that i have a hard time stop stopping to <laughs> stop working and They know that if something would be really, <laughs> really mm. pressure, pre uh, you know, they, they, they know that I would do it anyways. Um, but they are so respectful, most of them. And they are more like, okay, I think it's really important that Kata takes the time off and I will leave her in peace. Um, so it, that's, that's totally so okay. So you are taking and your laptop on this vacation. <laughs> Yes, but Ren, I have to tell you maybe that my husband, he's uh, the CEO of a um, software development com company and he will also take his iPad with him <laughs> and I'm sure he will be in Slack all the time answering questions of his employees, so it's mm. not a problem. We will be sitting on the balcony in the Provence in France. Nice, nice. <laughs> Chatting and, away. Um, we will... <laughs> Yes, it, it will be a mess. I, but it's okay for us. It's really, it's really okay. And I think um, we will try to not do that. That is the plan. And we will see how it works out. All right. But I think it might be okay. First, first I need to get healthy again. And 
again. It will work out. Hopefully. Amazing. All right, Katharina, I hope you feel better enough for your vacation. Thank you so much for coming to the show. This was really, really fun conversation and I enjoyed getting to know you on a more personal yes, level. Yes, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it as well. It would be really nice if we could stay in touch. For sure, for sure. On 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 Instagram, okay. on email, on on every platform. Amazing. Everywhere. Uh, and if you come to Stuttgart again, uh, please let I'm me know. I'm hoping to get there soon, hopefully. I have no clue when, but uh but yeah, I enjoyed it so much. Amazing. All right. Yeah, you are always welcome here <laughs> in Esslingen as well. Here in this Flat. Nice, yeah, which looks so beautiful in <laughs> okay. the background. All right, have, have a good Thanks. time in your vacation and we'll catch up when you come back. Okay, thanks, Ren. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.